lineman was, was going up in a, in a bucket truck to do a, a very simple job um, and work on, on a grounded neutral wire on a particular high voltage line. Um, but, but just complacency, not thinking, um, um, decided he just kind of he looked up and, and saw a different problem on an energized phase. Wasn't even thinking about what he was doing and came in contact with, with both the phase and the neutral. He's missing an arm and a leg now. I had aerial device controls that were sticking, and it was very cold one morning, and I was coming in horizontal into an area to work. And when I let go of the controls, because you have to run two booms simultaneously in order to do that, when I let go of both the controls, because I was where I wanted to be, one boom stopped and the other one didn't. And when it didn't, it slammed my head into a, a street light bracket which resulted in a spinal injury, and it laid me up nine months. According to National Safety Council statistics, every 103 minutes in the United States, someone is killed on the job. Every eight seconds, someone is injured. While you're watching this video, 150 workers will be hurt. Within the next four hours, two will be killed. Bucket trucks are great tools. They save time and make work easier. But like any tool, they may be hazardous if maintained or operated improperly. And mistakes can be deadly. Here are a few tragic reports from actual cases. The driver parked the bucket truck in the uphill direction, set the emergency brake, but did not chalk the wheels or engage the outriggers. As the worker in the bucket inspected the transformers, the truck drifted backward pulling the bucket into a crossbar and shattering it. The bucket worker fell 35 feet to the ground and died from multiple injuries. He was not using a fall arrest system. Against regulations, the worker was riding in the bucket when the truck drove through an underpass that did not provide enough clearance for the raised bucket. He died upon impact with the underpass structure. The employee was in the bucket, grounding overhead guys, when he came in contact with a bracket that held a 7,200 volt hot phase wire. The fact that he was not wearing protective gloves or sleeves contributed to his death. These deaths and most other fatalities and injuries associated with bucket trucks could have been prevented. If a worker becomes complacent or takes shortcuts or lets their guard down, um, while working in a bucket truck, um, we, we have to really understand one thing, and that is that physics never makes a mistake. Whether you're a veteran bucket truck worker or an apprentice, this program is designed to help you recognize and avoid common hazards. Overview information on how to inspect and maintain bucket trucks and what to do in case of an emergency will also be presented. Content for the program is based on information from industry experts and guidelines and regulations established by the American National Standards Institute, ANSI, the Scaffold Industry Association, SIA, and the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA. These guidelines and regulations apply to everyone associated with bucket trucks, from designers and manufacturers, to sellers and renters, to owners and operators. We can't cover everything you need to know to work safely, but we'll introduce or reinforce approved safety procedures that apply in most situations. Bucket trucks are used for many tasks and come in many sizes and configurations, from compact vehicles to those with towering booms. Most have four major components the cab chassis, stabilization system, truck body, and aerial device. Buckets or baskets are required to be at least 39 inches deep to put the lip above the waists of most workers and reduce the risk of falling out. Some buckets are 42 inches deep. Safety features such as guards and ground fault interrupter circuits and warnings are also included on bucket trucks. These are designed to help prevent accidents and may not be modified or removed. 
Bucket trucks must be classified as insulated or non-insulated, but even insulated models will not protect workers in the bucket from phase-to-phase -phase or phase-to-ground contacts. If a person doesn't have a knowledge of those electrical lines, um, they have no business being up in an, in an aerial lift being close to those. They need to be able to identify energized, not energized, uh, the voltage that they are energized at and the precautions necessary when working around those. The coatings on utility lines, a lot of people think that they see this black jacket or a gray jacket on a conductor and think that that is an insulator, and it's not. The only thing that this is for really is weather protection and ultraviolet light protection of the conductor. It is not to be ever considered an um, insulator. Poor operator knowledge due to the lack of training or ineffective training is a major cause of bucket truck accidents. For this reason, OSHA requires personnel to be trained before they can operate bucket trucks on the job. ANSI requires the training be based on the manufacturer's manuals, employer's work rules, and government regulations, and that it include hands-on bucket truck instruction. It is extremely important that even though, no matter how well experienced you are as a bucket truck operator, no matter how good a lineman or a craftsman, craft person you may be, that you become familiar with this aerial device before you operate it. Many organizations also require annual refresher training and instruct personnel on what to do in case of an emergency. Bucket truck workers are required to wear and use various kinds of personal protective equipment. ANSI approved hard hats designed to reduce the danger of exposure to electrical shock must be worn by all personnel. Eye protection and fire resistant clothing are mandatory if electric arcs, flashes, explosions or flying objects might be present. Bucket workers must wear a fall restraint safety belt system or a full body harness fall arrest system. Being ejected out of a basket can be anybody at any time, anywhere. If you're not protected with a fall arrest system, you probably will not survive. Many organizations use full body harnesses because they minimize trauma if the worker falls or is ejected from the bucket. Fall arrest harnesses designed for bucket truck work usually feature hardware made out of non-conductive materials, such as Kevlar. To ensure a proper fit, each worker should have his or her own fall arrest equipment and be trained by the supplier in its proper adjustment, use, and care. The shock absorbing lanyard is attached at the center of the wearer's back between the shoulder blades. OSHA requires the other end to be attached to anchor points supplied by the bucket truck manufacturer. Belting off to other objects or structures is prohibited. Fall arrest equipment must be thoroughly inspected before each use. Look for cuts, holes, tears, abrasions, frays, burns, chemical damage, and other signs of wear. Examine hardware to make sure it is in proper working order. The best thing to do with a piece of fall arrest equipment that has been through a fall is to remove it from service and destroy it. Additional safety equipment is required for qualified personnel working on or near exposed conductors and circuit parts. This might include insulated gloves, sleeves, cover-up, and hot sticks. Keeping equipment and tools in good working order is a major factor in safety and a primary responsibility of bucket truck owners and operators. When a company or an owner receives a new piece or a new bucket truck aerial device, uh, he should do an inspection on it. That is required by ANSI standards. Uh, an inspection is not only just a walk around and operational, but full dielectric inspection. Modifications may be done to an aerial device, but only through authorization of the manufacturer of the aerial device, not the dealer of the aerial device, the manufacturer of the aerial device. And this authorization must be in writing and should always include a drawing. Daily vehicle inspection is critically important 
and must be accomplished according to the manufacturer's manuals for the truck you're operating. Some manufacturers include checklists with their trucks. Depending on how the truck is equipped, typical daily inspections include the following. Check tire pressure, lights, beacons, and vehicle fluid levels such as motor oil and windshield washer and transmission fluids. Inspect outriggers and outrigger pads for soundness. Operate the emergency brake and leveling system to verify they're working properly. Look for hydraulic and lubrication leaks. Examine pin retainers. And check for structural and mechanical integrity. Test communications equipment and inspect the jib boom and other material handling equipment. Move the boom through its entire range to verify it's working properly. Check the upper and lower controls and the bucket tilt system. Examine the boom rest, tie downs, and bucket for signs of damage. Open and close the bucket door to verify proper operation. Test all electrical circuits, including ground fault interrupter, start stop, and auxiliary circuits. Make sure all controls are properly marked and working and that consoles are free of tools. Tools can jam levers or buttons and cause accidents or prevent the prompt use of controls during emergencies. Verify tools and equipment are accounted for and stowed properly and that other standard equipment is present on the truck. If you find any problems during your inspection, have them corrected before operating the bucket truck. Owners are also responsible for ensuring that periodic, minor, and major maintenance is performed. Check the manufacturer's manuals for each truck to determine what is required. Along with maintaining equipment properly, it is vital to keep bucket trucks free of clutter, dirt, oil, grease, and other contaminants. Clutter creates tripping hazards and may make it difficult to operate controls. Oil and grease can cause slippery conditions on pedals and other surfaces. Debris and spilt petroleum products also increase the risk of fire. Always a danger because flammables such as hydraulic fluid under pressure and gasoline are present. Moreover, if a fire starts, the boom may serve as a chimney that takes flames directly to the bucket worker. Uh, we do climb onto the bucket trucks and we have to climb off the bucket trucks and work on the decks of the trucks a lot. And by keeping the deck area clean, the, the steps on or off the truck in good condition, we can avoid slips and falls, which can uh, be a hazard to line workers utilizing bucket trucks. The uh, boom, if it is dirty with contaminants, uh, oil, general dirt from the air and, and soiled particles of dirt, moisture and so forth, uh, can become an electrical conductor and start tracking over the surface of the uh, insulation of the boom and, and therefore lose some of its uh, electrical insulation characteristic. Before driving the bucket truck, perform a walk-around inspection to make sure the boom is cradled and tied down and all other equipment is secure. Never move a bucket truck with a boom in an elevated position. Always fasten your seat belt and make sure your co-workers fasten theirs. Drive with care according to conditions and watch for branches, wires, canopies, and other low-hanging obstructions. Necessary clearances will be listed in the manufacturer's manuals. Many organizations post clearance information on the vehicle's dash, a good practice. As you approach the work site, turn on the beacon lights and park with the flow of traffic if possible. Place the transmission in the appropriate position and set the parking brake. Then survey the site prior to positioning the truck to perform work. Look for and avoid hazards such as potholes, weak pavement, untamped earth fills, mud, sand, ruts, ditches, and drop-offs. These may set the stage for a tip-over accident. Avoid setting up on slopes and always check for overhead obstacles such as utility lines. When maneuvering a bucket truck into position, a signal person should help direct positioning to guard against collisions. Both the driver and signal person must check continually to make sure other personnel are clear of the vehicle. Before beginning work, place the transmission in the appropriate position, apply the emergency brake, and shock the wheels. 
verify that the tires are firmly positioned for lifts within the vehicle's on-rubber capacities. If the truck is equipped with outriggers, follow the manufacturer's operating recommendations regarding their use. Outrigger pads may be necessary to assure firm footing. When work occurs on or near a roadway, follow applicable work zone regulations to warn motorists of your presence. Single buckets typically have a weight limit of 300 pounds, including gear. Only one worker at a time may occupy a single bucket. Two workers may occupy double buckets, which typically have a weight limit of 550 pounds. Two buckets are employed on some units. Bucket capacities may vary, so check the manufacturer's manuals to be sure. As a first step in preparing for work in the bucket, remove climbers or gas that you might be wearing. Metal objects contribute to the electrocution hazard and should not be taken into the bucket unless absolutely necessary. Next, put on your fall arrest equipment and adjust and secure it properly. We have to understand a couple things about physics. <laughs> when you fall, you're going to fall 32 feet per second squared. And what we're going to do with this fall arrest system is provide a method for you to stop gradually and not be hurt at all. Boarding the truck and bucket properly also helps ensure safety. Never carry tools or other items in your hands when boarding. Place needed items on the truck, hand them up to a co-worker, or use a rope to hoist them up once you're aboard. When climbing onto the truck, use handrails if available, and maintain three points of contact at all times, either two feet and one hand, or one foot and two hands. Always use anti-slip surfaces, and never jump to or from ladders, steps, or walkways. Upon entering the bucket, close and latch the door, and attach the fall arrest lanyard. Before raising the boom, make sure no personnel are below or near your intended path, and check carefully for overhead obstructions such as tree limbs and utility lines. Continue watching for obstructions as you raise the bucket. Once the bucket is properly positioned, stay boxed in when performing work. This means standing firmly on the floor with both feet, not sitting or climbing on the bucket lip, and never leaning out of the bucket. Achieving additional working height with railings, planks, ladders, or other means is also prohibited. Those regulations are there for our safety to prevent injury to the working personnel on or around those bucket trucks. Some booms include material handling devices that may be used to lift equipment such as transformers. Before attempting a lift, consult and follow the weight restrictions shown on the truck's load chart. Be sure to factor in the weight of lifting devices such as headache balls, hook blocks, and jibs. Make it a practice to check load lines periodically across their entire length to verify soundness. Look for nicks and other signs of wear and replace damaged lines. In preparing for the lift, always verify that the load line is level wound on the winch drum and at least four wraps of line are visible. Use approved rigging techniques and position devices such as slings, ties, and hooks properly. Never attempt to lift more than one load at a time. Combined weights are unsafe, even if their total is within rated capacity. Beware that the booms and jib are designed for vertical hoisting only. Never use aerial devices to pull or push loads or move objects horizontally. Once the load is rigged securely, lift it slightly and recheck its stability before continuing. When lifting, watch the load at all times and proceed slowly and carefully. Never move a load over ground personnel. If work needs to be halted, lower the load to the ground. Never leave a load suspended in the air. Under certain conditions, including work with energized conductors, ground personnel are required to observe the bucket worker at all times and be prepared to take action if something goes wrong. Lower controls, however, must not be operated without the permission of the bucket operator, except in emergencies. Thank you. 
Emergencies involving bucket trucks are complex and hazardous, Jim, both to those who Jim, may need okay? rescuing Jim. and to rescuers. Emergency code red. This is truck 740. I'm on 114 Maple Avenue. I've got a lineman in possible electrocution. I'm going to rescue him. Acknowledge. Because of this, many organizations train personnel on how to handle emergency situations effectively and safely. One basic rule is personnel should contact emergency help as soon as possible. To speed this process, post emergency numbers in a convenient place and make sure all crew members know where they are. Basket rescue involving a possible electrocution um, where the person may not be breathing. At first you don't know this because when you're working on the ground and you have a lineman in the air who has crouched down into the basket, you do not know exactly if he's breathing or not. If, if he is not thrashing around and if he is not yelling and if he does not respond to your command to him, are you all right, or some other verbiage, then you may assume that he's unconscious. He may be not be breathing. If he's not breathing, you have four to five minutes from the time that he received that shock until serious brain damage is going to start to occur. You must act quickly, you must be precise, and you must not cause another victim, meaning yourself, or another injury to him. You have to know what to do. Bucket trucks are highly useful machines that offer many benefits, but they also present many potential hazards. These can be avoided if you always think safety first. Use procedures required or recommended by ANSI, OSHA, and industry experts. And be alert to situations that might result in accidents. Work defensively, just as you drive defensively. Wear and use required personal protective equipment. Inspect and maintain bucket trucks according to the manufacturer's manuals. Keep equipment clean and clutter free. Drive and set up for work carefully. Watch for obstructions such as branches and wires. Always stay boxed in when working in the bucket. And be prepared for emergencies. On the setup of the truck, make sure that they're aware of the, the functions and the controls and the safety associated with that truck and make sure that the truck is, is set up secure, level, um, and they're aware of the limits of that truck. Become familiar with the operation and understand what that equipment can do and, and be familiar with what that equipment. And always bear in mind to keep your mind on your work and think way in the back of your mind somewhere all the time that physics never makes a mistake. Whether you're driving down the road, working 90 feet in the air, or performing another of the many tasks associated with bucket trucks, a lot is riding on the decisions you make and the care you take. Many mistakes cannot be undone. That's why it's critically important not to make them in the first place. Always take the time to work safely. Your life and the lives of your co-workers depend on it.